your diaries. The new, new Angry Birds has landed and it's called Tiny Wings. And it's pretty damn cute and simple. You're a bird with very small wings and so you've got to use momentum to get yourself flying over hills and dales. You're in a race against the sun setting to reach across a number of islands to get to the next level, collecting coins and perfect runs as you go. It's one touch operation. You press down to tuck your wings in, going downhill, and release to fly, making it one of the simplest games out there. The graphics are pretty twee, as is the music, but in this cold, hard, cynical world, a little bit of twee doesn't hurt. Can you DJ with an iPod? It's a contentious issue, and it's probably best not to get into it here. But if you were to try such a thing, Tap DJ will at least give you the best chance yet. Featuring two touch turntables, pitch control and a crossfader, you've got nearly everything you need. I say nearly because there's only one audio output on the iPhone, which means there's no pre-fade listen, so you can't queue up tracks before you bring them into the mix. There is a visualisation of tracks so you can line things up by eye. It's a poor second option, but with enough practice with tracks you know well, you might just get away with it. This is a journey into music and sun. You can also scratch away on each virtual turntable, but they're a little small to achieve anything with a large amount of flair. This is a journey. The app can access your iPod library, or you can chuck tracks straight in via Wi Fi or USB transfer. You can also access effects, EQ and loop points for further audio adventures. With no pre-fade listen, it's still a bit of a toy, but if you hook two iPhones running Tap DJ up to a mixer, then you could easily wow the crowds and it'll still be lighter to carry around than a record case. Imagine a world where your keyboard typed your emails for you because it knew what you were going to say, without you telling it. It just knew you, your deepest desires, your biggest fears. That's exactly what SwiftKey for Android does. It's an Android keyboard that predicts what you're going to type next, based initially on how the world writes, and after time how you yourself write. For instance, the first time you write I love, it will suggest you as the following word. However, write that you love cakes a couple of times, and it'll realise you have no feelings for fellow humans, and instead suggest cakes each time. It also allows you to retype an entire email, I found, simply because it remembers what you said last time. It is frighteningly magic. There's a 31-day free trial, and if that turns out to float your boat, you can get the full version for a very reasonable £1.23. Sky TV, a service beloved of anyone who prefers HBO to going out on the town and America's Next Top Model repeats to socialising with friends. Me, basically. And now Sky has done the unthinkable by creating an iPhone and iPad app that's actually better than the on-screen EPG remote control combo. Open the app and you'll see the star programmes laid out for you to browse through. Hit the Sky TV Guide button and you'll be taken to a familiar EPG grid, with buttons to take you to the current time, pick which day you want to view up to a week in advance, which type of channels you want to view, a detailed view and finally your settings, which is where you'll find your account details and of course a one-stop option to upgrade your package. You can, of course, set any program you want to record, and there's a search button at the top for when you know what you want. But my one enormous complaint is the fact that you can't series record from the app, which has led me to miss several second episodes in several series. Bad form, Sky. You should always account for the stupid people. At the current time, Windows Phone 7 does not boast cut and paste. It's promised in the next version of the OS, but since that's got a deadline of later this year, it's no bad thing to have an interim solution. And that's what Visual Copy Paste Browser is. I'll say it from the outset, the process is incredibly convoluted. Open the app and you're faced with Google's search page, although you can also input a specific web address. From here, you select Edit, then copy, then drop your finger on the chunk of text you want to copy. 
You can do some rudimentary fiddling with what you've selected and then send it to Twitter via email or export it as a Word document. You'll notice this is no good if you want to paste, say, an address from an email to Maps, but it does enable you to clip web pages. And Windows Phone 7 owners, I'm afraid in this situation, beggars can't be choosers. Want more? Go to www.fraculus.com forward slash follow for a glut of RSSE, iTunesy, podcasty, subscription-y options. <coughs>